Well, good morning, Sobble Church, and welcome to our Christmas online gathering. We're so glad that you're able to be here, whether you're by yourself uh, in some quiet place or whether you have uh, people all around you, welcome family, uh, or you are tr desperately trying to hear this over the craziness of having little people around you, wherever you find yourself. Merry Christmas. We're so blessed to have this uh, baby Messiah born and we're celebrating his birth even now. And so all of history, all through scripture has been leading up to this point right here where the Messiah comes and he brings with him hope and joy and peace and love and he is the Messiah. From this point on, we'll be looking to the cross as we go through the story more and more in the Gospels, but let's just, just bathe in the glory of His goodness and God's provision through this Christ child that comes. The Messiah is born. Hallelujah. Well, this morning we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, having some fun. We want to do some singing. We want to spend some time in the Word and hear a story there as well. And as we begin today, I have something just a little bit fun from the staff here. Let's go and check that out first. <laughs> Joseph and Mary. Choose Joseph and Mary. Oh, Joseph and Mary. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to be good at these. Okiam mal heath fadeful. Oak. Oh, come all ye faithful. That makes sense. I get that one's pretty easy. All right. Next. Ace tearing deer yeast. Ace tearing deer yeast. Ace tearing deer yeast. Oh, a star in the east? Okay. Ace tearing deer yeast. Ace. What? I don't know what that one is. A star? A star in the east. That one's terrible. I object to that one. Silent nights. Silent tights. Silent nights. Silent tight. That's that's the easy one. We should start with this one. Silent night. Silent night. Silent night. Holy night. Silent night. Silent night. Silent height. Silent tight. Silent night. A baby in the manger. A baby in a manger. We which shoe a mare eek wrist mass. Okay? We which shoe a mare a mare eek. I assume Christmas is Christmas, so we wish you a Merry Christmas. 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 And we do. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New and a Happy New Year. Okay. And a Happy New Year. From Mary one ad Sobble Church. From everyone at Sobble Church. Fro Mary one ad from everyone at Sobble Church. From everyone at Sobble Church. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas or whatever. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from everyone at Sobble Church. 
All right, we wanna take some time now for singing. Now here's the plan. The next few minutes may seem a little bit like karaoke and that is absolutely by design. We want you to take some time with everybody who's in the room uh, to sing along with us. And so the words are gonna be on the screen. Uh, feel free to crank the TV or the computer up so that we drown you out a little bit, but please join us in singing. These mostly songs will be familiar. There might be a couple little extra bits in there, but enjoy and let's just worship the Lord together uh, through these songs this morning. And before we do that, why don't I just take a moment and pray for us. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of your son. The Messiah is born and with him comes hope and peace and love and joy. And God, we want to just thank you for that provision, for your love, for your uh, affection, for your planning, for your timing. God, you are so good to us. Now we want to sing some songs to you. And as we do that, some of these songs will be familiar to us, but please invade our spaces. Help these uh, songs to be worship. Help them to uh, just uh, illuminate something in our hearts so that we can draw closer to who you are and celebrate everything that you've done in our lives. You are so good and we love you so much. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Shepherds watch, keep me. 
Merry Christmas, everyone. What's the most memorable Christmas gift that you've ever received? For me, it was a battery-operated toy train that I received when I was about four or five years of age. And I am 58 years old now, so you do the math, that means I received this toy train 53, 54 years ago. And guess what? I still have it all these years later. I can't think of any other Christmas gifts from my childhood that I still have other than this toy train. And I've hung on to it for some reason and it's moved with me uh, from house to house to house. It's been packed and repacked over the years. And um, I've actually brought it here with me today to show all of you. And I'll do that in just a moment. I was born the youngest of seven kids in my family. And the second youngest is my sister, Mary, who is four years older than I am. So when I was four or five, she was eight or nine. And um, what we used to do on Christmas Eve when we were that age is we would leave uh, some treats for Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. Um, and maybe some of you kids, you did that last night, you left some goodies for Santa. And so Mary and I would do this. Our other siblings wouldn't because they got to a point where they were kind of too cool to, to do that. But we would leave some, usually some cookies on a plate for Santa and a glass of milk because who doesn't like a glass of lukewarm milk in the middle of the night? And uh, we would leave some carrots for the reindeer. Usually it was like a bunch of carrots with the tops still on them. And we would leave a note for Santa. And usually my sister would write it because she was a better writer than I was and in fact still is. And it would be the note that would say some variation of, Dear Santa, how are you? We are fine. Uh, here are some cookies for you to enjoy and a glass of milk. And the carrots are for Rudolph and all of the other reindeer, your friends, Mary and Chris. And um, I remember being so amazed on Christmas morning to get up and to see the plate with just a crumb or two on it and to see the glass of milk with just like a trace amount of milk left in the bottom and uh, the tops of the carrots along with the stems still there but the carrots themselves um, gone. And I remember just being so amazed by that. And Santa, what he would do, he would write back to us, usually on the note that uh, we had written for him. He'd write somewhere on it or on the back of it. Uh, something like, Dear Mary and Chris, thank you so much for the cookies. They were delicious. And uh, the, the reindeer really enjoyed the carrots or something like that. Your friend, Merry Christmas, Santa. But he would always write it in crayon. Santa always wrote in crayon. Every note that I ever saw from Santa was always in crayon. Well, when I received that toy train, uh, like I say, when I was four or five or so, when I received that train, I rem it's, it's a very vivid memory for me. Um, I can remember where that box was seated on the, on the floor in my parents' uh, downstairs family room. We called it the rec room. It was, it was on the floor. It was about four feet out from the Christmas tree. I remember what way it was facing. I remember where I was when I first saw it. And it wasn't wrapped. Because Santa didn't wrap gifts that he brought to, to our house, maybe because we had a large family and it would have just taken too long. Um, the other gifts that we gave each other as siblings or that we gave to our parents or that they gave to us, they were always nicely wrapped in Christmassy paper, but the gifts from Santa, they were unwrapped. And so there was this box, this toy train, and it had my name on it. And it was written in crayon. And so I was like, who else could have done that? Only Santa writes in crayon all the time. And uh, it was a pretty amazing thing. And you know, I don't remember as a kid actually wanting a train. Um, but in my young mind, I suppose, I just thought, well, Santa's in the business of gift giving. So he knows gifts. And so this must be just the right gift for me. Well, let me, uh, let me show you, and uh, we'll go over and take a look. And so here uh, is the box that the train came in, and here you can see my name 
uh, written in crayon, and here is the train itself. Um, we just put this together this morning. This train set has literally not been assembled for decades. And uh, we popped a fresh battery into the train, so uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot here, and, and hopefully this, this works. Contact, oh, there it goes. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. I think I can. Ah. Uh. Isn't that great? That takes me back. I'm surprised how back in the day they made uh, things so steep for little trains, but, you know, as I was thinking about the, the train, and thinking about that gift, the most memorable gift I'd ever received, God is in the, the gift-giving business too. There's a little letter in the New Testament, it's called James, written by a guy named James, and in that little letter he says, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Everything that's good in your life is ultimately a gift that you have received from, from God. And God's very greatest gift is described in a little verse in the Bible, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16. It's probably the most famous verse in the Bible. It's been memorized by probably millions of people, if not by billions of people. And it's, uh, it's a verse that shows up in lots of unusual places, like maybe you've watched the Super Bowl or World Series or Grey Cup or something, and there's been a shot of the, the crowd and somebody's holding a sign that says John 3.16. I remember um, Gina and I took the kids shopping once. I think it was like a back to school kind of shopping trip, and we were at Barry at the mall, and we were in this one store called Forever 21. And uh, one or more of the kids had, had uh, got some clothing from there. And I was really, really surprised to see on the bottom of the bag, so their retail bag that they put the clothes in, printed on the bottom of the bag, kind of in the folds, was John 3.16. I'd never seen anything like that before, especially from a secular retail uh, store. So it's a verse that just is popular. It shows up uh, in all kinds of places. Why is it so popular? Why is it so important? Well, it's a verse that explains a lot, actually. Um, it explains the reason for Christmas. It explains why history is kind of uh, divided into BC and AD. Uh, it's a really important verse. It really summarizes kind of the whole story of the Bible in one verse. If you get this one verse, you really kind of get the big idea of the Bible. And it's a verse that describes the very greatest gift ever given. And John, in the gospel that he writes, uh, describes this gift as everlasting life. There's another verse in the Bible, it's Ephesians 3 and verse 17. And, and that verse says, May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And that's really what John 3.16 is about. It's all about God's marvelous love. Let me, uh, let me just quote this verse to you, and I'm going to quote it from the King James Version, because that's what I memorized it in as a little kid, and maybe you did too. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I remember listening to Rick Warren talk about this verse once, and uh, as he was talking about John 3.16, he encouraged people to circle six words in it. Now, let me see if I can get these six words right. He encouraged people to circle the word God, and only, and Son, and perish, an everlasting life. G-O-S-P-E-L, gospel. It's one little verse that 
contains the gospel message. And again, if you get this one verse, you really get the big story of the Bible. And, and this verse as well, um, this, is, this is true in the King James Version. I can't say it's the same with all other versions, but in the King James, it has 25 words. And uh, which means that word number 13 is the middle word. There's 12 before it and 12 after it. The middle word is son. And the son is Jesus, the son of God. And the first 12 words are about God's marvelous love. And so let's, let's, uh, let's try and count these out. Maybe, maybe you're watching and you've got bare feet or you've got slippers on. We're going to need all of our fingers and a couple of our toes for this. So... Uh, let's, let's try it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. And then the next word is son. That's the central word. And so the first 12 words are about God's marvelous love. The final 12 words are about us. It's about you and it's about me. It's about people. So let's, let's try again to count these ones out. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the first 12 words are about the love of God. The last 12 words are about you and me. And what connects the marvelous love of God with you and me is the Son, is Jesus. And it's kind of the gospel in in a verse in miniature. And that verse is really, it's a picture of what Jesus came to do at Christmas time. He came to bring God and us together. There's a, a fancy theological word for that. It's the word um, atonement. God and us coming together in Christ. God not only loved the world, but he so loved the world. That word so in Greek is a, it's an adverb of intensity. And it has the idea of nobody loves you like God does. No one has ever loved you like God. No one will ever love you like God. We sometimes sing a song that says, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. His love is extravagant and it's lavish no one will ever love you like God loves you. And I know that God loves you because God so loved the world. <laughs> that's you and that's me. Uh, it's all of us. And it's an unconditional love because that word love is the word agape, which isn't a feeling word. It's a, it's a choice word. God has made a choice to love you and to love me. And his love is, is um, incredible, overwhelming. And he has chosen to, to love us. He loves you on your days when you're happy, and he loves you on the days when you're grumpy. He loves you when you're at your best and when you're at your worst. He'll never love you more than he does right now, and he'll never love you less than he does right now. There's not a single thing that you can do to make God love you more, and there's not a single thing you can do to make God love you less. He, he loves you. He loves you so much that he wants you to be with him forever. That's why this great gift is everlasting life. Even after you die, God wants to be with you forever. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, God in flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. Remember John 3, 16, the first 12 words are about God's love. The last 12 words are about us and what brings us together. What brings the love of God and us together is Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was born humbly in Bethlehem, laid in a, in a feeding trough. That's about as humble as it gets. But he grew up and he taught us how to live. He taught us to, to love God, to love others, to forgive, to seek reconciliation in all of our relationships. He taught us all those things, and we killed him for it. We put him on a cross. 
and crucified him, but what we didn't know was that he was actually bearing, taking on all of the ways that we had fallen short, which is another word for sin. He took upon himself all of our sin and he died on that cross, but he came back to life. He rose again, demonstrating, validating that everything he taught was absolutely true, including this gift of everlasting life. What a gift. Um, how do we receive this gift? Well, the verse tells us, whoever, whoever believeth in him. Have you placed your trust? Have you, have you said yes to a personal relationship with Jesus? That's how we receive God's gift of everlasting life, abundant life now and life with him everlasting. It's the greatest gift in all the world. You know, when I received that toy train as a, as a four or five year old, I was amazed to see my name on that box written in crayon. I was amazed that Santa knew he knows my name and my name's the only name on that box. This isn't for me and somebody else. It's, it's all mine. It's just for me. I remember as a kid watching another television show called Romper Room. Some of you might remember that and uh, with Miss Betty. And at the end of Romper Room, every time she'd pull out this, this mirror and she called it her magic mirror and she'd say, and I see Dave and I see Evan and I see Tommy and I see Christopher. And I'd be like, what? Miss Betty knows my name. Well, there's something even more incredible than Santa knowing my name and writing my name or Miss Betty. And it's that God knows my name. And not only does God know my name, but he has written my name down. There's a verse in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, that says to followers of Jesus, rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Well, I hope this Christmas season that you have great joy and peace in knowing that God loves you. And he's offered you the gift of everlasting life. And it's in his son, the Lord Jesus. And I hope you know the joy of having received that gift. Merry Christmas.
Well, thank you, Chris, for your awesome story. Uh, I actually got a chance to play with the train too, and it's a blast. And so uh, if you don't have one of those, maybe we can find them on eBay. I, I have no idea. On Amazon, I, I don't know. Um, but maybe maybe not. Maybe just the, the thought of having that train set is good enough. The one thing that I do know that you can get is uh, eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so, hey, if you have uh, some time over the Christmas break, I would invite you to just uh, consider and, and come to him in prayer. And why not take some time and invite this Savior into your life? He has changed my life absolutely for the better. And I would love to see that begin in your life too. I don't know everything and you don't know everything, but the part of the story that I did know when I gave my life to the Lord was enough to help me to get on the journey. And so I'd love for you to do that too. If you have any questions or you have any follow-up, I would invite you to send us a quick little message at hello.sobblechurch.ca. Our pastoral team's here. We have lots of volunteer uh, leaders that are uh, on board as well, and we'd love to connect with you, pray with you. Let's start this journey together. What a great way to start 2023. All right, that's it for our video this morning. We tried to keep it a little bit short and sweet. Uh, I do have a little bit of music here at the very tail end of our time together. Feel free to have that on the background as you are oh, talking or having a coffee or whatever you might be doing. And we'll see you next Sunday, January the 1st, right here, either in person or online. We'll be ready to go at 10 a.m. on Sunday. All right, blessings, Merry Christmas, bye for now.